This video is brought to you by Prime Fasteners, my favorite place to get tools, accessories, fasteners, everything I need for the job site. They have all the big brand names that I trust. They have their own line of pneumatic tools. So check them out at primefasteners.ca where they're totally job site. At first glance, there, you might think to yourself, there's not much to see here. But what we've done is this is the aftermath of installing a flush mount beam up inside the attic. So we've taken the old ugly drop beam during this renovation and installed a flush beam. And the whole point of it is, is to show you it's not that difficult, a little extra effort, and it goes a long way into opening up this space and making it look like a nice modern home. So don't be afraid to do a flush mount beam. We'll show you a little bit of what we've done here. If you like the video, give us a like, a thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel. As you can see, we're in the middle of a renovation and we want to show you the difference between two styles of beams. One is a drop beam, as you can see before, and now we have this flush beam in place. Now flush beam, it just adds a lot of value to your home. If you are doing a renovation, I highly recommend installing one. We will show you just a few tips and tricks and just show you quickly how we installed this beam. We're not going to go crazy into detail today. Uh, this one is relatively easy. Show you a few of the tools that we used. But at the end of the day, a little bit of effort goes a long way. Now we're gonna really open up this old house and uh, we're gonna add some great value. So let's jump into what it is and how we did it. This is a late 1950s home and it was also before the day of trusses. Now a truss roof versus a rafter roof such as this is a truss is just an engineered roof member where all you need to hold it up are the exterior walls. Whereas back in the day, prior to whatever 1970 or so everything was done with rafters so it's just basically individual pieces nailed together and in a situation like this you know you have a ridge beam that holds the peak up you have rafters that run down on each side now these are the old ceiling joists now ceiling joists you couldn't span 26 or 28 or even 30 feet you had to have a center wall now it is a load bearing wall but it's not crazy because it's just holding up what they call the ceiling joists. So in this situation we're not holding up roof load we're just holding up the ceiling joists. But still you have to make sure that you think about things properly, have this beam engineered like we did and uh, make sure you, you follow the steps and the tricks that we're going to show you. So that's the difference. This roof is a rafter roof with ceiling joists that need support down the middle. So one thing that I did is I actually took the dimensions of the house and I went to the truss manufacturer and they supplied trusses, floor joists, and LVL beams such as this. I gave them all the dimensions. I said, this is what I have. Engineer me this beam. They did. And this is actually designed to hold the whole roof load based on the width of the house, the span, and what it is basically what this is down the center. Here's another viewpoint of the room. Really all we had to do at the beginning is just buy some lumber, get prepared for our temporary beams. We chalked a couple of lines, took out the drywall, opened this thing right up. That way we knew what we were up against. We could see everything inside the, the roof. Then you just got to install your temporary beams. In this scenario, we just used a two ply two by six and we used three posts. You could do a two by 10 with two posts, whatever you want. Just make sure it's like we went overkill on this one. Um, so you do a temporary beam on each side. So the beam is down. Our ceiling joists are overlapping each other. We need to cut those out and make room for our new two ply LVL beam. And really all we have to keep in mind for this is making sure that this sits on top of this wall that's already existing. We, we haven't changed the span of the beam, so we know that the old beam was in place. We're just going up higher with it, making the ceiling flush, so we don't have to worry about loading down into the basement. Everything's already existing. Now, if you're changing this and lengthening the beam, just make sure that you go downstairs, investigate, make sure you have the proper loading down to something solid like a foundation or a, a telepost or something make sure that that's done properly and then yeah we just chalked the line made sure that this beam would sit on top of this wall 
we just cut a little bit wider just to give us room to tuck this thing in. And uh, all you have to keep in mind is we need this to go three and a half inches past so that you have proper bearing for a beam. So three and a half on the other wall, three and a half here. And actually we'll pan down and we'll show you, but we're actually gonna add two more plies this way. So we have more than enough bearing here. After that, it's just a matter of getting the length of your beam, cutting your members, nailing, them, nailing your new LBL beam together, slipping it up into place. And then we basically, sometimes we had to wedge these ceiling joists up into place individually just to get them nice and flush put your hangers on and use a hanger nailer here's an air nailer for hanger nails now I challenge you to find a phrase that makes sense and you can spit it out easily now my first three years of being in business I was too cheap to buy one of these and as soon as I did I realized holy man this would have paid for itself on the first job so that's why I'm showing you this tool is if you don't have one and you're building decks or doing stuff like this, go get one. It'll save you tons of time. But as you, you probably know that, if you've ever put a hanger on by hand with a hand nails, it takes about 30 seconds to realize what a bugger it is. So get one of these tools. So like a lot of my tools, I got this at Prime Fasteners. They have their own line of pneumatic tools such as this. And it's just for people who are budget friendly. And really at the end of the day for me, I don't mind buying a tool like this, and you can see I did buy it because I wrote my name all over it with the date, as I normally do, is, yeah, I don't mind saving money as long as it's reliable and has some of the features that I'm used to and that I like. And you know what? We've tried this gun out, and we do like it. It has, let's just go through it quick. It has this device just for hanging it from a joist or from your tool belt or anything. That way you're not constantly bending over and trying to figure out a place to put it where it's not gonna fall. You can just hang that on your tool belt and away you go. I like this air adapter that swivels. It just makes it easier. It's kind of out of the way, helps you maneuver the gun easier. And then of course with one of these devices you want the positive placement for the nails. So it's easy to just get in the hanger hole and pow, away you go. The other thing is just the exhaust. Like a lot of this is standard, but a lot of these little features just come in handy. Is this exhaust pivots easily? So that way it's not blowing air in your face every time or dust, especially, especially in this case, you can just get that exhaust out of your face. Uh, the safety feature is really good. Like you actually, ha you have to have it right in the right position to, to fire it which is nice, especially for if you have apprentices or new guys working for you, they're not gonna accidentally nail themselves. Prime Fasteners also carries all the other brand name tools that you, you need or like. Makita, Milwaukee, Bosch, DeWalt, all the big brand names. They have the screw guns, the PAM screw gun. Uh, they even have a lot of the Titan spray foams that I've made videos on. So they have spray foam, uh, subfloor adhesive, drywall adhesive, items that will save you money, save you time. So check out some of the Titan products that are available through Prime. And uh, let's show you how this thing works. Just like that, my friends. We ran through that pretty quick, but I think you guys get the gist of it. Look at how beautiful this space is, even though it is getting mud and taped right now. Um, and by the way, Chad, our taper from all our other videos, he's doing this work for us. So if you check out some of our drywall videos, this is Chad's work in front of you. So he's a beauty. But yeah, you can see that it's opened the space up. It's an awesome rental. And uh, don't be afraid to install a flush beam. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or check us out on some of the following.